I hope we will be leaving soon. I should go and interview the passengers in the restaurant car. The passengers who agreed to come and talk to you are assembled, Poirot. Mr. Masterman is already here to answer your questions. Perfect. Thank you, my friend. Sit down, Mr. Masterman, please. Thank you. Does the name Cassetti mean anything to you? No. Should it? Have you heard of the Armstrong kidnapping case? Of course. It was all over the news a few years ago. Your employer's real name is Cassetti. He was the man behind that kidnapping. Mr. Ratchet was... He murdered that poor little girl? Mr. McQueen, the man you worked for is a kidnapper named Cassetti. What? <laughs> what kidnapping? He murdered his victim, a child named Daisy Armstrong. The Armstrong kidnapping? You had no idea of Monsieur Ratchet's real name? Damn, skunk! Why are you so upset? My father was the district attorney who handled the case, Mr. Poirot. I saw Mrs. Armstrong more than once. She was a lovely woman, so gentle and heartbroken. If ever a man deserved what he got, Ratchet, or Cassetti, is the man. He didn't deserve to live. Madame Olson, have you heard of the Daisy Armstrong case? No, I've never heard of it. It was only two years ago. It was famous. Maybe so, but it was not famous in Spain, where I have been helping the refugees from Africa. You've never heard the name Daisy Armstrong? No, never. Daisy Armstrong? No. No. No! No! Yes. It was all over the English tabloids before I went to Jordan. A horrific crime that claimed the lives of an entire family and their wrongfully accused nanny. That's right, isn't it? Quite so. I thought the culprit had been punished. Some might say that the culprit was punished last night. Oh, my heavens. May I ask you a few more questions? Yes. Yes, of course. You read about the crime, as you said, in the tabloids. Yes, that's right. For weeks, news of the royal family was eclipsed. Have you ever been to the United States, mademoiselle? No, never. Jordan was really my first trip abroad. You were in Jordan? Yes, I was an English tutor there to the children of a high official. Until recently. What is your relationship to Captain Arbuthnot? Who? A former soldier traveling with us. You must have met him. Ah oh, yes, I met him on the platform in Istanbul. We only had a brief exchange of pleasantries, nothing more. British Reserve and all that. Ah, the British Reserve. Yes, with this I am familiar. Are you sure everything you have told me is accurate, Mademoiselle Debenham? Of course. Mademoiselle. I know that you met Captain Arbuthnot at the Tocatlion Hotel. You were spying on me. I am very attentive to my surroundings. It helps in my profession. I... well, it's your word against mine. I had occasion to be of some assistance in recovering Captain Arbuthnot's train ticket. While searching his room, I also discovered one of your earrings. Whatever your relationship may be to the good captain, I doubt it has anything to do with British Reserve. Hmm. You will not tell me your secret, mademoiselle? I... I can't. I... 
I don't know what you mean. Poirot, Miss Debenham's got nothing to do with this business. Nothing. Do you hear? Archie, stop! Captain, no! This behavior is unworthy of an officer and a gentleman. Leave her alone! Have you no honor? Archie, we should go. Captain Arbuthnot, I am certain you are a brave soldier, but you are a poor actor. The truth is that Your relationship with Miss Debenham is beyond doubt, Captain. Your reaction was apparently that of a man trying to protect the woman he loves. I might understand that if your relationship were some cleverly disguised secret, but it is not. You make puppy dog eyes at one another at every opportunity. You cannot hide your love. Everybody knows. I advise you to stop with your accusations, Mr. Poirot. I'm going to escort Miss Debenham back to her compartment. Make of that what you will. The captain and Mademoiselle Debenham are obviously adamant about not revealing their relationship, but this scene convinced me there is more that is not so obvious. This murder has everyone on edge. In my 25-year career, I have never seen such madness aboard the Orient Express. I understand, my friend. The more we learn, the more perplexing this train ride becomes. But we have other clues to pursue. What do you have in mind? The broken watch on Monsieur Ratchet's wrist, for example. And the handkerchief found near the body. Who does that belong to? This little drama we have just witnessed has not put you off the scent. Far from it, my friend. Will you return to your watch over Mademoiselle Locke? Yes, I will. Dr. Constantine can probably use a break. Good. Au revoir, Poirot. That was easy. I must admit I'm not right this time. That was easy. Yes, there are only three possible hypotheses. The watch has been tampered with, or it is out of adjustment, or it indicates the time of the murder. I shall explore these last two possibilities before reaching any conclusions. If the watch is out of adjustment, it may be broken. There may also be another reason related directly to Ratchet. Maybe the watch is set to another time zone. The watch was not defective because the second hand is still moving. My little grey cells did not let me down.
that's the right answer. If this theory is correct, then the murder took place at 12.15 a.m. I must interrogate all the passengers to see if any of them have an alibi for this hour. My little grey cells did not let me down. Monsieur Foscarelli, I would like to ask you a few questions, if you allow me. Ah, Signore Poirot, is it? I was wondering when you'd get around to me. Unfortunately, you find me on a mission of mercy. Hello, Monsieur Poirot. Sorry, we have a small problem. The orange juicer has broken down and I can't fix it. Mr. Foscarelli has kindly offered to help me. It isn't a car engine, but I am doing my best. Even with the two of us, we can't manage. Let me guess. You call upon Poirot to help. I'd be happy to answer your questions when we finished.
should work correctly now. Bravo! I should stick to automobiles. Well, now we can talk calmly. Monsieur Foscarelli, is it? Antonio Foscarelli? Delighted, Monsieur Poirot. You have, of course, heard about Ratchet's murder last night. Oh, naturally. It is all anyone is talking about. Have you ever been to the United States? Yes, it has been a primary market for our cars for the last ten years. You remember the Armstrong case? Armstrong? The name, yes. It was a little girl. A baby, was it not? Yes, a very tragic affair. Did you know that Cassetti, the kidnapper, was actually Ratchet? Oh, no. Then he deserved to die. I mean, wouldn't you agree? Can you tell me your movements on the night of the murder? I went to bed right after dinner, but I slept very badly. My roommate, uh, Mr. Masterman, had a toothache. Oh, he moaned all night. It woke me up several times. Did you hear anything or notice anything unusual? No, nothing that I can think of. I stayed in my bed all night. Well, thank you, Mr. Foscarelli. I'm sorry I couldn't help more, Signore. I remain at your disposal if you should need me. Thank you so much, Monsieur Poirot. I can put orange juice back on the menu. <laughs>